In this video, we'll show you how your floor can go from looking like this to this. Just watch this video and we'll show you how to do it. Hello everybody, Dave here again. Welcome to another video. In this floor we have a three quarter by two and a quarter red oak floor. It's common grade. And you can see by the walk through here we've already started sanding and it's just this floor is in severe need of a sanding rear finishing job you can see the sun damage and just the overall wear of this floor now this was an estate sale the parents had passed and so the kids were just selling this house it's a beautiful location it's right on lake ontario and it's kind of sad they had to sell it but that's the way it is now our process is that we go 40 grit, then 60 grit. I could go coarser, like a 24 grit, but then I'd have to sand everything 40 grit anyway. So uh, I find if I have to make a couple of more passes with the 40 grit, that's fine. Um, so that's, that's the way we're gonna tackle this floor. Now I'm getting a lot of uh, commentary on my process and how I actually sand the floor and why I sand right to left and not always left to right. Ideally, if you can sand left to right at all times, I guess that's fine, but I've balanced these machines where when my drum contacts the floor from zero inch to eight inch, it's an equal contact uh, right through. So these light machines, they're only one, uh, 110, you know, one and a half horsepower machines, and the machines are 125 pounds, so they're they're not a lot of uh, uh, there's not a lot of damage it can do to the floor um, so I've looked at the end result of sanding both directions left to right or right to left and there's absolutely no difference that I can tell we also go to a higher grid on the orbital sander we OBS 18 the entire floor which completely changes the, the sanding structure of the grain pattern so uh, nothing is going to be visible at that point uh, so there's no difference there but our process that we do here is 40 grit then 60 grit and I was training this individual this fellow here he was uh, working with me a couple of months and then he decided to move on to greener pastures which is fine now we did edger 60 I this is the only section I did was above the stairs here because it was quite a bit higher on this nosing so I wanted to deal with that and uh, then he dealt with edging the, the remainder of the floor but uh, certain things I like to do myself and we're coming up here now to a view of beautiful Lake Ontario and, uh, so notice the scenery right now because you're going to notice it a little differently later on. So now he's edging the remainder and doing the corners as well. He's fine. He's tackling both. And I'm finished sanding with the 60 grit here. Nice day to do some sanding. So now you see the snow. We had snow overnight. So completely different scene. So at this point now, I'm using the OBS 18 to do the entire floor. I 60 grit and then 80 grit. And you'll notice I spend a fair bit of time on the actual uh, perimeter where the edging was done. So I concentrate heavily on those areas. But we had hand scraped and palm sanded with the Makita palm sander. But you see it kicks up a lot of dust when you're doing this process. I just like to do this. And what it's doing, it's preparing the grain nicely. It's putting everything into the same consistency on the floor for the subsequent uh, uh, steps when we're going to have to stain and then finish the floor. So I like to put everything into the same grain consistency. Similar to if you were doing a table or a cabinet. You would sand at 280 or 320 with a palm sander. So, of course, we're not going to that extreme on a floor. I mean, it's a floor, so, you know. But I like to at least do the same uh, process that you would if you were doing fine furniture. 
and now we're thoroughly vacuuming and swiffering the floor now I'm on to training him on how to stain the floor so I tend to be a training ground for guys they they seem to come and work with me for a bit and then move on which is fine it's the same thing I did when I was starting out so you know I I did spend a little bit more time training though when I when I was starting out but uh that's fine I, you know anyone could do this and if you feel that you know you've accomplished enough through a few sessions with me and a few jobs then by all means you can venture out on your own you know invest in your machines and and go ahead and rock it out uh, but uh yeah so i tend to be a training ground for a lot of guys and that was the case in this situation as well but you see we have to stop at the staircase and then we have to start on the other side of this room because we have to work our way out and it's necessary for us to have a walk out i don't like to walk over the stained floor i've seen you know i, I see other guys who uh, apply their stain and they're walking all over it and you know i you know it's not a big issue i guess if you're you know if you're careful but i just don't want to be doing that after i apply the stain i don't want to be walking on it until it's thoroughly dry We're back the following day. The stain is dry. Verithane Early American Stain. It's looking really nice. No edger lines, no drum sander marks. It's an all around beautiful looking floor. So I'm going to be applying two coats of Fabulon satin urethane. This house is just being prepped for resale. And right, we'll take a look at Lake Ontario. Okay, so at this point I'm applying the first coat of urethane. I cut in the section I'm going to do first and then I start rollering. And uh, I always uh, roller one section and as I advance I go back the previous row half the distance of the roller, which in this case is two or three planks to get any overlap and we have to be careful that we stop at a certain point because we again we're always thinking about our exit so I'm going to go beyond this staircase a little bit you can see in front of that cabinet down here in front of the fridge and then I'm going to move over to the other side of the room so here I can get this section done and then I'm going to have to stop at a certain point here and I have to go to the other side because we have to exit out you're always thinking about that when you're applying your urethane just to make sure you leave yourself a nice exit always have some tape on your wrist and a piece of tape uh, to get any potential hairs or bugs or anything that could be on the floor this is your last line of defense is tape so you want to make sure you're prepared and ready and I'm just exiting So we're back the following day, and the first coat is dry. Got Verithane Early American Stain. Right now it has one coat of satin urethane on it. I'm going to be screen sanding, vacuuming, tacking and then applying the second coat. I'm only doing two coats on this job as they're just prepping it for a resale.
So now I'm screen sanding with 180 grit on the screen. And I cut these out of uh, my 12 by 18 sheets that I have just to fit them to the uh, applicator. I like to, this particular floor was quite nice. It, there wasn't a lot of, uh, there wasn't a lot of grain rays. And that has everything to do with um, the way we orbital sand. So by orbital sanding with the OBS 18, I'm able to knock down a lot of that high grain. So after staining it in the first coat, it was actually quite smooth, really. And I didn't have to uh, overexert myself trying to, to smooth this out. I just lightly go over it, um, almost just the weight of the tool, a little bit of pressure. And you're able to control it a lot better that way. If you use the OBS-18 and try to screen sand with the machine, there's the potential of going through the first coat and the stain right down to the bare wood. So I, you know, I'd rather not deal with that so that's why I hand screen it and now we thoroughly vacuum of course because uh, you you leave that little residual film after you screen it everything's thoroughly vacuumed and then I go to the Swift ring and I always Swiffer twice you don't see it in the video here but I, I'll Swiffer the floor and then I'll vacuum my Swiffer and I'll Swiffer again you know, for the amount of time it takes, it's it's just well worth it because it leaves that residual film. So I like to swear for it. Now I'm on to the second coat here, exactly the same way as I apply the first. However, now I'm wearing shoes so I can go a little bit faster. I tend to work a little faster with the shoes on. I just don't like to wear shoes on the stain floor between the staining and first coat. It's just kind of uh, the way I do it. I know other guys will wear their shoes with, uh, you know, those... Uh, filter booties on but I just rather do it in socks it's whatever your preference is as long as you're not going to leave marks on the floor that's fine but I apply this the urethane the same way you know apply a, a, a one pass advance to the next and then go back half the distance so I'm noticing a great deal of my viewers are not subscribed only about three percent of the actual viewers to my channel are subscribed if you do find any value to these videos, you like the videos, we'd greatly appreciate if you could subscribe because a great deal of work does go into uh, making these videos. I'm getting a lot of uh, hate uh, commentary on my poor video uh, production skills, and I understand. I'm you know uh, there's a lot of camera movement on a lot of my footage, and I definitely hear the uh, the outcry from the people, but I'm. You know, I'm not trying to win an Oscar or an Academy Award for cinematography. I'm just trying to, you know, output content that could be useful and helpful to the everyday person who might be considering uh, refinishing their floors. So if, you know, if you're able to see the process and how we work through a job, you know, you, you get a good idea of an understanding what's required. So that's really the end game here. But... Uh, these videos there is a, a fair bit of work that i have to do to create them i have to you know do all there's probably 80 or 90 clips to make this particular video so you know there's quite a bit of editing time that i do do and although my filming isn't the greatest uh, you know there's still a bit of work so if you enjoy the video and you find any value please like the video and subscribe so i'm just finishing off the same way i did the previous coat and um and that's it they're just doing two coats on this job and that basically brings us to the end of another video i hope you enjoyed the video and uh if you are going to you know go through the process of sanding or finishing i hope you found some use and enjoyed the video and until next time happy sanding and finishing Dave out.